Well, today you caught me at my home flipping workshop. Actually, another speaker is speaking right now, so I have about an hour to kill. And I had a question come in based on an article that was just posted about a possible housing bubble. They said, what do you think about that? Is there a housing bubble? Should I wait to get into real estate? Should I hold out? Should I sell? What should I do? Wow, I will tell you this, it's a loaded question. My crystal ball is broken, so I don't know. Two years ago in 2020, just before COVID, myself and many of the industry leaders thought that for sure in the year 2020 or the year 2021 early on, actually in the year 2020, we thought for sure we were gonna have a reset because typically speaking, every 10 years or so historically, markets have a reset. Well, we're in about a 14, almost 15 year bull run right now with real estate. It's really gone up. When Amber and I started back in 2007, it was right at the end of the, it was right at the beginning of the real estate induced financial crisis that we had here in the country. I believe very strongly that that was brought on primarily by bad, I don't want to say fraudulent, but bad lending habits, right? Bad lending practices. People were buying houses that had no business buying houses. They couldn't afford them. They were dishonest people that were double selling mortgages, triple selling houses, uh, triple mortgaging houses. It was not a good experience. And I don't know much about that because we didn't start during that time. We started just after, but I heard all the horror stories about it and I was kind of shocked by it. But that is what brought on the crisis in 2008. It was a real estate induced financial crisis. What's happening today in the market is really basic business fundamentals. It's a perfect storm of low interest rates to buy properties. So they kept interest rates low to stimulate the economy so people could buy properties. Then people started buying a lot of properties. All of a sudden there was less inventory, which created demand. So the demand was there, but the inventory wasn't there. That created to be a seller's market. So naturally speaking, just because of basic economy, the prices go up because more people want houses and there's not as many of them to sell. On top of that, institutional borrowers and investors, not borrowers, but institutional, uh, lent, institutional um, buyers, and I buyers entered the market and started buying houses at large clips. Now, even companies like Zillow got in trying to flip houses and they quickly realized that it's not so easy to flip houses. So Zillow got back out of the market after losing millions and billions of dollars. But other companies are doing the same thing. Some are successful, some are not. So all of a sudden, all these people are buying houses and there's not as much. So that's causing the prices to go up. So fundamentally speaking, a house is only worth what someone's willing and able to pay for it. I say able because there's always that neighbor in the property, there's some neighbor or some fam family guy that says, I'd give you 150 grand for that house tomorrow. And then when you ask them to point up the money, they don't do it or they can't do it, right? So if you're willing and able to put up the money, that is what a house is worth. What that's doing in the economy, what, what that is doing is, it's actually making it so that other houses are becoming worth more money because the comparable sales or the comps as we call them, are showing that houses sell for that much money. So when somebody goes to buy a house that they thought might be 250,000 and now all the neighboring houses have sold for 300,000, well, what's their house worth? Now it's 300,000. So people say, well, that's, is that artificial? That's artificially inflated. No, it's not because people are buying houses around there that are actually paying that much for the house. So when a bank goes to loan money on the house, the bank says, okay, so if, three other houses have sold for that amount of money, that means that your house is worth that much and I'm willing to loan you a percentage of that value. There's not really a bubble happening. There are some markets where it's crazy. Some markets around the country, there's a handful of markets where people I've heard are paying 100 to 200,000 over asking price. That's a little bit insane. In those markets, I think you've got to be very careful. There could be a bubble. But I think that most of the country, in my professional opinion, there won't be a massive crash. The market that we were in in upstate New York, that's where we still flip houses. We live in Florida now, but our, our primary business, we flip 100 houses a year plus, is in the upstate New York market. During the 2008, 2009, during that crash, when other places around the country, whether it was Florida, California, Texas, different places, or in Nevada, where property values really dove during those years, they had incredible spikes that went up really fast. And then all that bad lending was going on, right? And so all of a sudden when it, when it dropped, the values dropped quickly, they spiked down. Now, ironically, here they are back up a decade later, they're back up higher than they were before. 
But all that being said, in our market in upstate New York, it stayed very level. We, we did a tiny dip and that was really about it. And that's how most of the country was. Most of the country didn't get nailed with that massive spike and we didn't. And I think that explains a lot about our success because we continued on building our business based on fundamentals. Fundamentals being people are always gonna to wanna to buy a house. There's always people that wanna downsize, people that are just you know getting out of college, people that are starting families, people that want to invest in real estate, people that wanna buy houses to live. And for a long time when we started, people said, oh, the, the millennials, they will not be buying houses. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. They are buying houses like crazy. They're trying to buy houses, they just can't buy it now. So had I listened to the naysayers back then, I wouldn't have bought houses. But I've been buying houses and they keep going up. So I don't think there's gonna be a huge decrease. Now, will there be an adjustment? There has to be. At some point, the crazy rate of appreciation has to calm down. I don't know when. Again, my crystal ball is broken. But at some point, I think in the coming year, we're gonna see as interest rates are climbing up, the, the feds have, have uh, moved up the interest rates, that means banks are usually follow suit, and they start moving up their interest rates, you'll see less people borrowing, so less people are buying houses, less people can afford houses because houses are getting expensive and money's getting more expensive. So I think you'll start to see a slowdown, but I think it'll be a natural adjustment and a slowdown as opposed to a recession because people will still understand the value of real estate. Now, will it spike like this you know, forever? No, but even if you buy houses now, I think it's a great time to buy real estate. It's always a great time. They say the best time to buy real estate was 20 years ago. The best, next best time to buy it is right now. Why? Because these cycles happen over and over and over. Now, if you're in for a short-term play, it may not be the best thing for you, right? If you're in for a short term, if you wanna try and capitalize on appreciation, you can. In my opinion, that's a very risky play. If you're somebody that says, I wanna come in and I wanna buy a house and I wanna, I'm gonna put it under contract, I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna sell it six months later and make $50,000 based on only appreciation, not based on improvements or anything like that. I think you're making a huge gamble. I think you're risking a lot. You could lose $50,000 in a heartbeat. You could be upside down on that house before you know it. So I'd be very careful in that speculative investing based only on appreciation. I would definitely take a look and say, if I can buy a house now and hang on to it, how can I afford the payment on it? Because if I can hold in that house for another five years, 10 years, even if the market adjusts now, and as interest rates go up, if the market adjusts and it starts to stay level for a while, do you know what I think is gonna happen? I think in another 10 years, this will happen again. There'll be something like this that appreciates again. There'll be more inflation. And again, real estate tends to keep up with inflation. It always, it always pace, it stays in pace or outpaces inflation. So I would buy as much real estate as you can and figure out how to get it paid for. In other words, can you put a tenant in there? Can you do a lease option on the property? That's somebody that pays a little more rent for a property. Can you do a short-term rental on the property that brings in three or four times the normal rent? Is it in an area that will allow that? Because maybe you can afford to make the payment that way. Because there will still be appreciation. Historically speaking, over 100 years, real estate has appreciated in value. You can set your watch by it. Do I think it's gonna go down? No, I think it will go up. Do I think there might be a little bit of a dip? Maybe, but again, I have no idea because two years ago, I thought I knew, but I didn't know. So I would be ready because you don't know what's gonna happen, but I will tell you this, there's never a bad time to buy real estate. I don't think you should worry about it losing value because even if it takes a small dip, it'll definitely come back in a short amount of time. So get your hands on as much real estate as you can. I'm a real estate hoarder. I like to hoard houses. We have over 50 houses now and I'm looking to get to 100 houses. We've been working on that. And so I'm trying to get as many houses as I can under you know, just to own them and keep them rented because I know that in time this will continue to happen and continue to appreciate and that's how you hedge your bet against inflation so to all the experts out there that are saying yes there you know all these things and all those things there's 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 this happening in the market and this happening and this is going to cause this nobody knows nobody has any idea what's actually going to happen in the market but what I can tell you is historically speaking real estate has always outpaced inflation it's always been the best investment you can make. That's why I am 99% in real estate and about 1% in stocks or anything else. I've, I'm all in because I strongly believe that real estate is the way of the future.